there's strong suspicion that she has a lesion or like a brain tumor, a tumor in her brain. And it's something that we're gonna try to control and combat with. This is my cat Haven. And a few weeks ago, Haven had her first ever full on seizure. So in this video, I wanna talk about what happened with her seizure, what we're doing now. I was getting ready to let the dogs in for the night. They were outside going to the bathroom. And it was, I don't know, maybe nine o'clock at night. And then I turned around and Haven was like midway falling from one of our uh, armrest chairs and hit the floor on her back and just started kind of well, twitching around like really fast for about 10 to 15 seconds. And then she stopped <clears throat> I went over and she had like drool on her mouth. And basically she was just like frozen in time for a couple of minutes where she didn't want to get up. And so I picked her up and put her on her front and back legs. And then she just stood there and started making circles in one direction about three or four times. And then eventually started walking. Um, but she was kind of dragging her back legs. I was like, of course, Rachel's out of town for work. Everything happens to the animals when Rachel's gone. I took her to the emergency vet and they put an IV in her. They didn't give her any medicine, but they said basically you're gonna have to watch her, you know, either here at the emergency vet for a day or you're gonna have to take her home and keep an eye on her for the next day and make sure she doesn't have another one. And so here we are. Here we are th about three weeks later. No seizures in three yeah, weeks. No just seizures. some twitchiness yeah. and aggression and well, okay, let's jump Not in. Aggression. Yeah, let's jump in. We'll talk about that in a minute. But okay. I want to go back on this story because, like, this is pretty insane to me. I mean, I've never had a pet that had seizures. I know they're very common in animals. And sadly, because of... Di oh, there, see? Yeah. yeah. She gets a little... Little outbursts of... Uh, yeah. It's okay. Something. It's okay. Why well, was touching her near her back end? We'll get into that. This whole thing has... It's almost changed our, our life in a big way way, which I'll get to in a moment, but I do feel like a lot of people go through stuff like this with a pet who is their world, like mine are, goes through something traumatic and it, it really does impact you in a big way. But what was crazy is I was actually, I wasn't traveling for work. Remember, I was actually traveling to Portland for a girl's trip and with two of my best friends, Brenna and Anita. And I always have my phone with me, like it's on my hip 24-7. And especially when I'm traveling, like I, I'm always paranoid I'm gonna miss that one call. Comment below guys if you are the same way. Like if, if somebody calls my phone, I feel the extreme anxiety to answer it because I'm afraid that it's, you know, a call like I missed. So, but anyways, that said, I was out to dinner with girls and I missed his call. Multiple. Multiple calls. And texts. Now, one thing that was really, it was like, it was like a little bit of a uh, between us because he was like, call, call, and I get it. Like you were scrambling, trying to take her to the vet and wanted me to know, and I appreciate that. But then he started texting me like urgent, urgent, urgent. And so then when I see it, I see missed call, missed call, uh, like three missed calls and like all these text messages saying important, urgent, call me. So of course, right away, I, I finally see it maybe five minutes later. Yeah. And I call. And I'm like, answering and he doesn't answer i flipped to this day we're like look rule is when you text urgent you answer right away but well i was on the phone with your mom yeah so he had called about the seizure which guys by the way that's super sweet like that's he and my mom are close and that's that that's another top topic but that was sweet that he called my mom so here's the rule of thumb at least what this vet said is if your animal has a seizure one-off seizures can often be caused by a toxin like maybe they got into some kind of chemical or it could just be a one-off that they never have again. But they said if she she has another seizure within 30 days, then they highly, highly recommend medication. As you guys know, we take a really holistic approach with our animals, and if we can avoid conventional and tra traditional medications, we do. But that wasn't always the case, which I'll get to in just a moment. So while this is all happening, I was telling my best friends about it as we're at dinner, we're all freaking out. I actually start cursing, like, I'm like, oh, like, oh, I, I just need to get home. And then instantly, like once the vet confirms that she's stable, she's not continuing to have seizures while she's there, and it could be a big issue, but we don't know. All I can think about at the time is how do I, like, how could I have not been there for her? You know, I'm glad Mikey was. And it's funny because anytime my cat does get stressed, she tends to go to Mikey. It's funny how he, he's like, all the animals, like when it's 
high time of stress, he's the, the core. Yeah, you would have panicked, I think, if you were here. I think I would have. Well, so, and you didn't tell them that you initially, when I didn't answer, you checked our, our doorbells and our cameras to see you know, where the dogs were, and obviously they were in here, so that it wasn't them that had an issue. And then you thought, oh, maybe Mike got into an accident, but he wouldn't be calling and you know, yeah. crash. Well, maybe I would, if I was. I would want, I think I'd, wa I think I'd want you to. I don't know. But then she checked the front doorbell camera and saw me walking out with a cat <laughs> carrier, and she's like, oh great, here we go. Then I knew, then I knew, that's true. So before he called me back after the missed calls, I, I, I checked all the cameras. I have cameras all over the house, in and out. And uh, yeah, I saw him carrying her out and I was like, oh gosh, like that's it. Like, I'll never, know, see, I'll like never see her again. Uh, and I'm not gonna cry in this video because this is gonna have a happy ending, I'm determined. That said, let's fast forward a little bit. So he came home, I honestly was panicking. I wasn't supposed to come home for a little bit, but I ended up booking the first flight home I could, which was like, leaving 5 a.m. I was out late that night and the earliest flight I could get on was like 5 a.m. the next morning and I couldn't sleep that night so I basically pulled an all-nighter, flew home early from my trip and got home as soon as I could to get to Haven. As soon as I walked in the door, uh, she was right there waiting for me. I was bawling. It I was, no, he had to go to work, uh, stayed as much as he could but had to go to work and here we are today. So that was all about three weeks ago. And I honestly wasn't gonna talk about it because I, it's just, it's hard. It's hard to talk about it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna think about it, uh, but it has been something that's become a huge priority for us to focus on how we can keep her from having further seizures. They did do, at the vet, I do wanna clarify that she has had follow-up appointments as well with, with a holistic vet. And she, they did do blood work as well to verify that there was no toxic issues. So what the vets are thinking it might be is the fact that she's about 15 years old and she was kibble fed for over half of her life. And I actually didn't over vaccinate her because we didn't do a lot well, with her. She's always been indoors, so we didn't have to really do a whole lot. Yeah, uh, but she was kibble fed for over half her life. So all of those reasons, the fact that she's old, there's strong suspicion that she has a lesion or like a brain tumor, a tumor in her brain. And it's something that we're gonna try to control and combat without major medication. The things that we're doing now that we're seeing huge benefits of and improvements on are one, completely kicking kibble. She was a primarily raw food and wet food cat for the past several, probably three, four years as is, but we would still leave kibble out especially when I was traveling because sometimes she would get picky and you know, it just is what it is. So we have completely kicked kibble. Uh, if you want some tips and tricks on how to transition your cat away from kibble, comment below. And if I get enough video, enough questions and comments, I'll tell you how we went about doing that. Uh, if you want a tip right now, you can go see the two crazy cat ladies. They have a lot of tips there. And so what we are feeding is a diet of raw food and we're still mixing in wet food into that. Right now the wet food we're using is Tiki Cat of uh, Velvet. Yeah. Uh, she only likes the salmon and the tuna flavors. And then the raw food, she obviously is eating Bones & Co. It's, it's not formulated for cats, I have to say that, but she's eating Bones & Co mixed with- Sardine juice. Yep, she has uh, <clears throat> canned sardines with no salt added. No oil. No oil. Oil in there is fine, but I just get the one without and no, not smoked. She eats, eats that. And then she also gets fermented fish stock from Answers and then raw goat milk from Bones & Co as well and uh, bone broth. So between all of those, that's what I feed her. But the net of it is we want to have as few carbs in her diet as possible because when you have a high carb diet, it actually fuels epileptic syndromes and conditions. And I'm not gonna go into the science of that, but that's what we're doing. Uh, in terms of supplements, I wanna give two big shout outs because there's two companies that I'm close with, that I respect, that I use my animals, and has really helped in her keeping, because the goal right now, and we, should, we need to say this, what my goal is, is to make sure she doesn't have another seizure within the first month, and we're almost there, because that means it could have been a one-off, just random episode. But the two supplements that, uh, two companies that I'm relying on big are Two Crazy Cat Ladies. Uh, first off, they have Catalyst, and they have OxyCat. 
I'll have all of this linked below, so if it's not focusing, don't worry about it. Uh, Two Crazy Cat Ladies are the number one advocates for healthy, holistic cat nutrition, supplements, advice, tips, everything. They like, think of me for dogs, that's who they are for cats. They are personal friends of mine. I've also increased her, her CBD dosage. Right now I'm giving her, you guys can see it, uh, CBD dog health. I'm using the heel and yes, there's a dog on here, but I give it to her. It's formulated for dogs and cats. Um, I'll have this linked down below as well. I will give her a full dropper split up into three doses every single day. Other than that, I'm just letting her live her best damn life, spending a lot of time with her and doing whatever I can to give her extra days and just praying and hoping that she has at least five, 10 million more years left. My name again. Hey, then you wanna say hi to the camera? So if you guys want, oh. I guess Bentley. I know, Bentley's like, hi. Did you fart? You wanna say hi? Hi, baby. Mm. Everybody wants to get I in know, the party. everyone. Come on in, guys. We're, okay. we're a family. We're doing the best we can. Guys, if you want to help support us, uh, then click that subscribe button. <laughs> help us on our mission to just better health. <laughs> and connect with Instagram. I post about her a lot on my Instagram at Rachel Fasaro. Um, and uh, I just want to thank you guys for being here. You know, I couldn't... Oops, that's okay. She's like, everybody calm down. Uh, I feel like you guys have been supporting me without realizing it. So lately I've been having so many of you take a photo or a video of you and your family or your dog watching the videos that I make here on YouTube and posting them on your Facebook or your Instagram and tagging me. And you guys were doing that more and more while I was really struggling with Haven. Remember I was like showing you like all the tags and that support makes me feel like we're not alone in this, even though at the time you probably didn't even know any of this was going on. So thank you guys for all of your support. Uh, and thank you to the two crazy cat ladies. I went to them right away when all this happened and they really helped me feel uh, not alone. And then of course, uh, CBD Dog Health, the team has been very supportive and reaching out and just providing a lot of love and kindness and I couldn't be more thankful. And thank you to you for taking care of her when I wasn't here. I got lucky. Oh, it's yeah. a 15 second window. I know, it, that you I actually mean, saw it. Maybe it happened before, who knows, but yeah. <clears throat> and, let's one. And a big shout out to our pet sitter. Uh, we use uh, Kaylin and Cynthia of Pet Care by Cynthia here in Austin, highly recommend. They jumped in and because I was gone, so they really help support during this. It was just, it literally, it takes a, it takes a, it takes, takes a tribe and community. So thank you guys so much. There's <laughs> hair flying everywhere. <laughs> she's wagging her tail. She's getting ready to bite somebody. Yeah, she's so uh, if you guys do want to see a video where I show Haven eating a raw quail, a frozen quail, uh, click that one right here. And if you do want to see a video on goat milk and how I give that to my animals, click the, ooh. <laughs> Click the video right here. Thank you guys, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye. Bye.